Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jasmine. So today I've got another speed build for you and this one is part of a collab competition organised by Miss Unfortunate. So big shout out to her because this is the second competition that I've been in organised by her and she is just super and lovely, super supportive and she has created so many great opportunities for swimmers to network and get to know each other. So I'm super grateful to her. So please go and check out her channel and show her some love but also check out all of the other competitors that are a part of this competition because they are all amazing builders so please go and check out their videos as part of this competition but also their channels in general because I'm sure that you will enjoy watching their content. Also make sure that you comment and vote on this video but also on all of the competitors videos as well because like I say it is actually a competition so we are all in with a chance of winning a prize. Personally I don't think I will be keeping a prize if I do win this competition. I'll probably donate it to another competitor in the competition, but I would like the pride of winning. So please make sure that you vote. And there is also an opportunity for you guys to win a stuff pack of your choice. So if you're interested in that, please go and check the description box below too. But the collaboration is called the YouTube of Horror Competition. And that is because it is themed around Halloween and we've all been tasked with making a Halloween House that is in some way connected to a scary story or a horror story or something like that. So I have chosen to recreate the house from the film Coraline, which might be bending the rules slightly because it's not like a ghost story. You know, it's not a real life house. I'm not actually quite sure what other people have decided to do, whether anyone's gone with something along a similar theme to me. And it's actually a kid's film or a ki it comes from a children's book that I read when I was a kid. So, you know, it's pretty tame, but we're a family friendly channel here. We love cozy content, you know, Scary stuff is not my forte, but I really, really love this style of house. And there were loads of elements to it that I wanted to get my teeth into. And I love the story as well. And it meant I got to watch the film in preparation for this video. So I hope you like it. Let me know what you think down below in the comments, whether or not you're a fan of the film. But basically all of the videos in this competition have got to talk through the story in their speed build at some point. But yeah, I thought that I would just explain to you a little bit about the plot and in doing so sort of explain the house to you. So in the story Coraline, Coraline is the young girl protagonist of the story and she ends up moving to this old house. It's called the Pink Palace and it's three sets of apartments. So the top floor belongs to a, <laughs> a Russian gymnast, I think. And so Coraline's family then move into the main body of the house, which is the ground and first floor I think and then downstairs there are two old women and they are opera singers or retired opera singers they're kind of weird <laughs> um so yeah Coraline moves in here and it's kind of creepy it's an old house and it's got weird vibes her parents are super super busy and they sort of neglect her a little bit and she's really into gardening and she keeps wanting to you know go and do all of these things outdoors but they're just busy working all the time and they don't have much time for her so so she then finds this doll that looks exactly like her but it's got buttons for eyes and she also is exploring the big house because obviously it's a big old house and she's bored so she's looking around the house and she finds this small door in the living room she manages to find the key for and unlock but at first it's just got bricks behind the door so she goes to bed and then she dreams that these mice wake her up and they guide her through the trap door that she found and it takes her to another version of the house that she's just moved into and that's the version that I've created today because the house that she lives in normally is actually a little bit plainer than this it's got different colors and it's a little bit more run down but I chose to do the other house and when she gets there she finds her mother and her father there but they're not quite the same they're sort of improved versions of her parents and they've both got buttons for eyes and her mother 
who is too busy to cook in the real world. Her other mother is cooking delicious meals and treats for her and her father who is also super super busy in her real life. In this new house he is playing the piano and making songs for her and they know she likes gardening and they've also made this absolutely gorgeous garden out the backyard for her that's in the shape of her face so you'll see me make that later on. So at first Caroline sort of thinks that this is a really ideal world to be in where she gets everything that she wants, her mum is exactly how she wants her mum to act in real life and her dad is much more interesting and some of her hobbies and passions are made the most of in this realm with her garden but when she goes to sleep she arrives back in the normal world and it's kind of disappointing to her. So then she keeps trying to go back to this other world with her other mother and her other father. So when she next falls asleep she leaves out cheese to attract the magic mice that took her last time and it transports her back again and this time when she goes there her other mother continues to be nice to her but then this time she says that she can stay there forever if she likes all she has to do is let them sew buttons over her eyes which you know is a bit creepy it's a bit weird isn't it <laughs> so obviously Caroline is taken aback by this she's super super weirded out and so I think she just sort of doesn't make a decision but then ends up going to bed saying that she'll sleep on it but thinking when she goes to bed that will take her back to the normal world because that's what happened last time but when she does go to bed she is trapped she can no longer go back to the normal world and I think she then sort of has an argument with her other mother and basically says that she doesn't want to sew buttons over her eyes so then her other mother gets super angry and then turns into this really grotesque version of herself she no longer looks like her mother she looks like a monster now basically and she locks her in this room and it's super super cold and super dark and it looks like there's no one else there but actually there's a bed and there's three ghosts that are in the room Coraline talks to the ghosts and she tries to work out who they are and she finds out that these are the ghosts of children who have previously been trapped by the other mother and who had let her sew buttons on their eyes and now they've not been allowed to leave you know just lived as trapped ghosts in this realm and she's terrified I mean <laughs> quite rightly but I think her friend manages to find her so she has a friend in the normal world and there's an other version of that friend and he manages to get her out of the room without the mother noticing and then she manages to find the door in the living room which takes her back to her own house House. But when she gets there, she realises that both her parents aren't there and they've been taken to the other world. I think there's a mirror in the normal house which is in front of the room where the ghosts are in the other house and she looks into that mirror and she can see her parents trapped and shivering and they've written help me in the mirror so she knows basically that the other mother has trapped them and that she has to go back to save them essentially. So I think she ends up going to see the women downstairs and they give her a device that helps her that she doesn't know how to use it yet but it will help her in the other world basically and then she decides to go back and she makes a deal with the other mother she says that she'll play a game with her and she says that if the other mother wins the game then Coraline will let her sew buttons on her eyes and she will stay there with her forever and be the daughter that she wants her to be knowing that she'll essentially turn into one of the ghosts but if Coraline wins the game then she can free the ghosts that are there and she gets her parents back and she can leave this realm. So the other mother agrees to this, thinks she likes games, she's obsessed with games and I think what Coraline has to do in order to win is to find the eyes of the children because when Coraline met her they said that the other mother had taken their eyes and they no longer knew where they were and that's how they couldn't return to the normal world is because they didn't know where their eyes are and Coraline also has to find her parents as well she has to know where they are basically the other mother has hidden the eyes of the children in each of the wonders she says that she has made for Coraline and so one of them is in the garden that she made to impress her another one is in the upstairs apartment of the pink palace Coraline actually 
went to a circus show to watch the Russian acrobat that I mentioned earlier, the neighbour upstairs. He performed a show to impress her in the other world. So one of them is there and then one of them is also downstairs, I think, because she also watched the women perform. <laughs> and theirs is a really weird performance. So if you've seen it before, yeah, it's really quite odd. Those are where the three eyes are and she manages to find them using, I think she uses the looking glass that the women gave her. And then obviously she manages to find her parents and is taken eventually back to the real world. So that is pretty much it. That's the story. I hope I did an okay job of explaining the story. Let me know down below if I've missed anything out or if you've seen the film before and you really liked it or had anything to add. But I thought I'd spend the rest of the video just talking through the bills because there's a lot that I've done here whilst I was talking about the story. So I might just refer back to some of the footage that you've already seen. So the first room that I decorated was the living room. That was actually a really hard one to decorate because in this other world, the living room is actually decorated with loads of like bug furniture and they're quite colorful and bright. The only time you see it is when the other mother has turned into her monster form basically. And she's sort of surrounded by these evil bug <laughs> furniture. I don't know, it's really odd. You'd kind of have to watch it to understand. Um, so I tried to replicate that the best that I could, but yeah, I don't know how well it looked. It kind of looks a bit odd, I think. And I tried to use as many bright tones as possible because that was definitely the vibe of that room. And then I also, I actually tried really, really hard to make sure that the floor plan of the house was exactly like the film. And I think it turned out okay in the end. It took me absolutely ages to work out how everything sat in relation to each other and which doors people were walking in and out of in to get into like the kitchen, for example, or the hallway. But it is pretty much spot on, I think. And I added a, a bathroom, but that was the only room that we didn't actually see in the downstairs. And then upstairs, I'm making Coraline's room now. That was a really beautiful room in the film because it's basically bright pink or bright red and it's got loads of white and blue furniture. And I tried to add as many details into the rooms as possible from the films. So you'll see me adding those knitted toys from Nifty Knitting. And that's because Coraline actually has like a talking octopus and a talking turtle in her room in the other world. So that's a little bit of a reference. And I also put the voodoo doll in her bedroom because that is obviously a reference to the doll with the button eyes. And that is obviously the doll that was used to spy on Coraline. And it was basically the connection between the two realms. And I think that's how the other mother sort of connected with Coraline and spied on her. And downstairs, I made sure to have a load of snow globes on the living room fireplace because in the film, she collects snow globes. And that's just something that, you know, something that you see a lot in the film. So I thought it'd be a nice little detail to add. And then we don't see any of the other upstairs rooms in the other house. So we see the parents' bedroom, I think, when she returns to her normal house. But that house is furnished really plainly because they're currently moving in all of those scenes. So none of the rooms look that nice. And that's part of the reason why I chose to do the other version of the house is because it was much prettier. So I ended up adding three extra upstairs rooms in addition to Coraline's room. So I've put in the parents' room, a spare room with a single bed, and then I turned the big other room into basically a desk. And it's got an area for sitting and a, a desk and a table. And then you'll see once I finish furnishing, I then go on to making the garden that looks like Caroline's face. And that was really both tricky and fun to do. I absolutely love the way that it looks in the film. It's a really impressive film visually, I think. It's very atmospheric and the animation is really interesting. I have no idea how they did animate it, whether it was through models or what, because it's a really interesting animation style. And I think when I was looking at pictures of the house to build, loads of big model houses kept coming up and I wonder, it made me wonder whether that was because they did use models to animate the film with. So if you happen to know that, please let me know down in the comments below because I'd be really interested to know. But yeah, you can see me make Coraline's face in the garden. So what I had to do was create this bridge for her nose. And that's a technique that I'd learned quite recently, but had to do quite a couple of times in recent videos. So you'll see me create the eyes made out of the pool terrain. And then what I did was create a room and then 
a room on top of the room and deleted the ground floor level and then I was able to lower the top room down to the level that I wanted and then I could add stairs and that effectively makes a bridge and so the bridge looks like her nose and the pool looks like her eyes and then I add loads of blue flowers around her face to look like her hair because her hair is blue and then I add a load of stones and flowers to look like her eyebrows and her cheeks and then her mouth is the area that you can see with the stairs. So the stairs are like little L-shaped stairs on either end and I guess they're like the corners of her smile so that might help you <laughs> work out how to look at it and how to interpret it but then yeah there was a lot of fiddly stuff that I had to do in order to get the stairs from this garden to the back door to work and this is actually where the garden is in the film. It's outside the back door and I was really annoyed because basically this lot isn't big enough. I started building this house on a smaller lot and I wanted to, well first of all I wanted to do it in Forgotten Hollow but there was definitely not a lot big enough in there because that world is like the perfect world to have this building because it looks like the film in terms of the creepy trees and the mist and everything like that and the mountains around it. It looks just like the scenery in the film but yeah like I said there wasn't a lot nearly big enough for this house to go on in that world so I couldn't do it there. So then I tried to build it in Granite Falls because that world has a lot of trees and it's quite a similar sort of atmosphere although it's not quite right but that lot still wasn't big enough. I needed a bigger lot than this basically but this is now on a 64 by 64 in Windenburg and that's obviously the biggest lot size that we have in the game but it still didn't give me enough room to do the terrain that I wanted in front of the house and behind it because like you can see here that I'm building this garden right at the edge and there's basically no room in between the garden and the house as well so that's it's a bit of a shame because I would have liked it to look a little bit neater and you know more like the film but there's not much that I could do really so I hope you like it anyway. I think it looks really good at night time because obviously the scene that we see the garden is at night time and all of the flowers are like fluorescent and they're also alive or animated and that's kind of the magic of the garden I think to win her over. So I hope you liked it. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Also I wanted to mention that I didn't furnish or make the basement level and that's obviously the level where the two ladies live downstairs. Although we do see the interior of our house in the normal version of the world in the film I didn't want to include it basically because I don't think we see it properly in the other world. Um, she goes downstairs for the show but it's not the same. It's like it's, it's a bit like the TARDIS in that you you go into the space and it's suddenly like this massive venue. Obviously it's magic, it's not real so I couldn't replicate that in any way in this build and the same with the upstairs apartment. She like steps into this tiny room and there's a tent like a full circus tent but it looks tiny and then she steps into the tent and it's suddenly this massive arena. So because I wouldn't have been able to realistically build that effectively I, I didn't bother with those two levels of the apartment and I figured that I would just keep the focus on the interior of the house that you see in the other realm as opposed to these magical venues. So I hope that's okay. I like to think there's enough in this build to make it interesting even if I didn't do those things. But it's a shame because those characters are really quite funny. I think the ladies are my favourite characters. They're just just so weird and in the film in the normal world they have loads of Scottish terriers they've got three that are alive and then on their walls they've almost like collected the stuffed versions of their past dogs that have died they've obviously had them stuffed once they've died and then they've just put a load of them on their walls to remember them I guess but it's super weird but also quite funny and <laughs> they've just got such banter between them these two old ladies and they're just constantly sassing each other and I you know they're a vibe I love them so <laughs> let me know what your thoughts are down below thank you so much for watching please like I said don't forget to vote in the comments and go and watch all of the other competitors videos as well and especially Miss Unfortunate as well go and check her out because like I said she's amazing she's such a valuable member of the community so please show her some love and show everyone's some love. They, they all deserve it, I promise. So yeah, that's it from me. If you like this video, 
video please like comment and subscribe and go and vote i'll leave the instructions in the description box below so go and check that out thank you so much for watching i'll see you next time bye guys